Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at further integration substitutions. Now there's one substitution method that everybody's familiar with, and that's the use substitution. And we said that that was going to be the inverse process of the chain rule. So when we have a composite function where the u, the derivative of whatever you substitute in for u, is actually a part of the integral itself, then we can go ahead and use that u substitution method to integrate. Now the other two that we'll take a look at is the root of f of x, where f of x is linear, and trig substitutions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the root of f of x, where f of x is linear. And in the most general case, these, this is what the form of that integral will look like. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specific case here. We've got the integral of x squared times it by the square root of x plus 1 d of x. Now notice, if we go ahead and try to use a u substitution here, we can go ahead and say that this is going to be x plus 1, then d of u is equal to d of x, and x is going to be equal to u minus 1. If we go ahead then and do a substitution here, then everything becomes something in terms of u, and notice that we can go ahead and expand this, and then go ahead and distribute u to the 1 half power to each one of the terms there, and then we can go ahead and integrate. So that's a very special case when we have the square root of f of x where f of x is linear and we have an x value that is squared outside of the root. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at trig substitutions. When we go ahead and take a look at trig substitutions, the one thing that we need to recall is our Pythagorean trigonometric identities. And these are the two primary ones that we need to go ahead and remember. We have the sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, and 1 plus tan squared theta plus secant squared theta is equal, to, uh, is equal to secant squared theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that if in your integral you have the radical of a squared minus x squared, then you're going to let x be equal to a sine theta. If you have this here, you're going to let x be equal to a tan theta. If you have this here, you're going to let x be equal to a secant theta. Now what is the reason for that? Well, we saw a little bit of that when we derive the integral which produces inverse trig functions. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this particular one here and let's see why this is going to be helpful for us, especially if there's, say for example, a d of x in the numerator. So if we go ahead and take the square root of a squared minus x squared, if we go ahead and let x be equal to a sine theta, then notice that d of x is going to be equal to a cosine theta d of theta. So what we have then is that the, by this substitution here, we get the square root of a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. Again, if we go ahead and simplify using our Pythagorean trigonometric identities, we come up with a cosine theta. So if we had the d of x in the numerator, then of course these would cancel and we would just come out with d of theta as we've shown before for the inverse trig function, sine inverse sine. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at x squared plus a squared, again, if we go ahead and let x be equal to a tan theta, g of x is going to be equal to a secant squared theta, and then by substituting this particular value for x, we come up with something that's simplified as a squared secant squared theta. So of course, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to look for cancellations. Okay? And notice that when it comes to the g of x and this particular trig substitution, notice that we got the a and the secant squared theta. So, of course, if we have, again, uh, the d of x in the numerator and this in the denominator, then, of course, it becomes a very simple integral. Now, the last one here, which we haven't seen before, is going to be the square root of x squared minus a squared. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to let x be equal to a secant theta. d of x is going to be a secant theta tan theta, and then if we substitute that value of x into here, notice that it simplifies to a tan theta. So again, if we have a quotient or a ratio of d of x and this particular radical here, there will be a cancellation, and then hopefully we can go ahead and integrate. Okay, so just to summarize again what we're talking about, there's different integration methods, all based upon different kinds of substitutions. We have the use substitution, which we're very familiar with, the root of f of x substitution, where f of x is linear, which allows us to go ahead and distribute this as a factor. 
and then we can go ahead and integrate it. And then we also have the trig substitutions, and the purpose of those trig substitutions is to try to look for cancellations, because we can go ahead and simplify the square root into something that is going to be involved, is something that's going to be in the d of x as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those integrals that will, will involve some of these further integration substitutions, and we'll go ahead and try to tackle them in class. Okay, hopefully that helps, and let's go ahead and see how we do with some of these problems. Okay, bye-bye.